Hello makers. I know you're as excited about the beautiful new Lost Shadow Grey that was just released from Tim Holtz and Ranger. And I cannot wait to use the embossing powders, the distress stains, the inks, the oxides, the whole thing. But I am most excited about the fact that we have a light gray in paint again, because one of my favorite techniques with Ideology was to take Ideology products and turn them into statuaries. And the main paint that I used for that uh, prior to this was pumice stone. But unfortunately, a few of the distress paint colors have been retired and pumice stone was one of those. So we can still get pumice stone and all the other products, but just not distress paint. That kind of put a damper on me making statuaries because although I have a whole bunch of pumice stone that I stocked up on, I know that many people may not. So with the release of the beautiful Lost Shadow, I knew the first thing that I needed to do with it was to make some stone statuaries and how fun that we have some spring stuff that I can do that with. So let's get started and not take any more time. Uh, I'm going to talk about what you need to make the stone statuaries that you see in front of me and then I'll show you how I made them and we'll wrap it up at the end. I am going to use the new salvage rabbit, tiny eggs. Uh, I may go ahead and use the salvage doll. Uh, I went into my stash. I pulled out some vignette finials and uh, which I've used before for this technique and I may also use uh, one of the urns which as you know has been retired so uh, make sure that you stock up if they are still available at your local store or um, your favorite online retailer. Okay, so let's get started on making things into stone statuaries. I'm going to be actually using this for a spring make that I have had planned for a while. And I this was prior to knowing about the salvage rabbits and the tiny eggs. So I was just going to use the salvage doll for the project I have in mind, but now I'm super excited that I can add the rabbit and the eggs. So let's get started making with the new Lost Shadow Distress Paint. Three. The finial set comes with kind of this chess piece looking thing, or you know, this is actually the thing that looks like the finial. And then you have two of these base pieces. So you have a large one and then you have a small one. Same with the finial, and then you have a small finial that looks like this. Well, I, for both of these in the past, have used my Dremel. You can use, um, if you have a little, you know, like a little hand saw or uh, gardening snips. And, you know, if you hold this with something in a vise or something like that and you're careful, you can trim that off. And then uh, I sanded it down. You can see I still have sawdust on me. Uh, I sanded them down when I did that on the other finnels and then that actually gives you four different sizes of these to be able to use and I have found that sometimes the top finials work better for me for the statuaries and I'm going to actually link in this to some that I made for uh, the particularly the one graveyard that I'm um, thinking of and then actually a, a spring garden uh, ideology one that I I used the doll for as well. So I'm going to attach her to this little doll here to the top and I think that is a good size statuary. This one just seems a little it's okay but she seems a little small in comparison to the base so I'm not sure that I want to go in that direction, but I have the option. So I know that this is a little bit cumbersome and huge, but I'm thinking of doing, as I had on here, a couple of eggs in the front and maybe an egg or two in the back and gluing that down with collage medium. And once I get them glued, I need to let them dry. And then I'm gonna take and cover them with texture paste. For this project, whichever one you have, it's gonna be fine because you're just covering it to give it kind of a stone texture in places and especially down around the bottoms or areas where you think that moss might end up growing. So you wanna make sure that there's plenty of texture there and then just a little bit on all of the plastic resin pieces 
because once all of that's dry, they're completely dried in place, the grit paste has completely dried, you're going to put a layer or two, depends, to cover the whole thing in Lost Shadow Distress Paint. I let all three pieces dry overnight and if you look closely you can see all of the little bits of grit paste and the texture there that's on each piece and so I have several layers that I need to add to this to make it look like stone statuary that's been in a garden for years so much of this that's sticking out, I'm going to put something on it to make it look a little bit mossy. But I just wanted you to see how they look before I do the next step, which is to use the beautiful Lost Shadow Distress Paint. So I'm going to get started painting all of these and I'm going to put one coat on and then we'll see. It generally takes a couple of coats. I want them completely covered in Lost Shadow. Before. Well, fellow makers, my tutorial went a little off the rails, uh, as you can probably tell from my voice, or maybe not, maybe I always sound like this, I don't know. Uh, I got a really bad cold suddenly um, after I started this, and I just did not get back to it. I spent the whole weekend in bed, so I am bound to determine to finish this because I'm super sad that I didn't have it done for reveal day of the beautiful new Lost Shadow color. So I'm going to keep saying that because it is gorgeous. I'm super sad that I missed sharing this on the day. But hey, all's not lost. We can keep sharing about it, right? Now, uh, I am a little bit, 
I don't know, scattered. I have like five distress sprayers and I can only find my oldest one that's all yellow. So this is just plain water in here. It's just the outside of the bottle that it has gone through years of inks and stains and paints and everything like that. So anyway, I just have plain water in here. I have a clean brush. I have some distress crayons. And I think that we have um, Rustic Wilderness Crayon, but I don't know. I couldn't find it. I just grabbed a couple of greens. So I have Mowed Lawn and Peeled Paint. I have Black Soot, Pumice Stone, Walnut Stain, and Brush Corduroy. And we're going to go ahead and age these to make them look like they've kind of been in a garden. So I'm going to do that in Fast Forward. But basically what I do, and just to remind you, I've... I glued these down. You saw me in fast forward, glue them down with collage medium, let those dry. And then I took my finger and I pounced tra um, translucent grit paste all over it. Now I'm going to say this, you can see that I tried and I didn't get it like under her arms here and things like that. That's fine. It's not really going to matter, but I will say this because I had trouble getting it on the bunny tummy too and under the arms that when you're applying texture paste to something like the bunnies or the salvage doll that are plastic, the Santa, the deer, any of those things, or even metals, I have found that the opaque, if you're going to paint over it, I would recommend you use the opaque texture paste simply because I think that it has some gesso in it that allows it to stick a little easier. I've just found that the sticks to slick surfaces a little easier and I have more trouble with the translucent grip paste. So if you are using translucent grip paste for that, what you'll have to do is do one layer and just kind of, just kind of smush it all over it as best you can let it dry, and then it kind of has the tooth to go ahead and take the rest of it. Uh, but the opaque, usually I only need one, for the most part, just one go around. Um, but since I need this for another project I'm working on, I was using the translucent for the slick thing. So you can see that there are some spots that it didn't exactly get stuck to, even with two rounds. So that's just my little, uh, you know, in my opinion kind of thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, make our statuaries look like they've been around for a while. So I'm gonna do this and fast forward. Basically all I do is layers and layers of different colors and then I will wet them. Sometimes I, I just completely douse them. Um, I will use my brush and kind of brush them in and get them down in to certain areas. Um, before I even start that, I may go ahead and use my Distress uh, blending brush that I have set aside just for my crayons and I may do that and get it kind of in some of all the little spots as well. So I, I want it to settle in among things so that it looks like it's been sitting out in the garden for a while and that you know dirt and grime and and years of soot have you know attached itself to it and then in spots I'm going to go over with the greens and make it look like a little bit of um, like algae or moss has grown on them as well. So that's why I have some greens out. All right, so as you're watching me kind of in fast forward, that's what I'm doing. And then we'll pretty much be done and these will be ready to go into the project that I have not started yet. I only have it in the planning stages, but this section will be done. And so Bringing it all together should be fairly fast. So let's get started aging our beautiful lost shadow distress paint.
Well, there you have it. The amazing lost shadow has come to the rescue and I am ready to make statuaries again for all seasons. So let's take a closer look at a few of these. As you can see with the urn, I didn't actually paint over the urn part too much with Lost Shadow. I did more of a dry brush technique on that one, but I did cover the whole top very well with Lost Shadow so that those eggs would have that light gray all over them. I think they look great. And then you can actually see where it has, it looks like it has moss and dirt and things from the ages all over it. And let's go ahead and look at our salvage doll. So the same thing, we've got our dirt and our age all over her. And then that beautiful light gray from the Lost Shadow just peeking through as a foundational color that really makes the other portions really kind of pop. And the final piece our Easter bunny statue for our little Easter garden that we're gonna make later on. He just looks fabulous. I love all the detail, if you could just really see it. And these eggs look like they are actually a part of the sculpture. When you get all of that texture in there and then you get the color down in between all of those, it just looks like they were sculpted the same time that he was. Look at all that detail with the grunge from the crayons and the texture paste. I love it. So there we go. Stone statuaries don't just have to be for a graveyard. They can be for a beautiful spring garden that you'll see in a future make uh, that will be coming soon. So stay tuned for that one. All right, my friends, if you have any questions about what I did, if the fast forward was too fast, you want some more detail, please feel free to contact me through my blog at playswellwithpaper.blogspot.com. That will email me right away if you use the contact me email section, and I will be glad to get back to you and try and answer your questions to the best of my ability. All right, thank you so much for stopping by, and I hope that you have a very creative day.